And more outrage this evening to news that the suspect in the Daniel Angling abduction and murder case was a known sexual predator who was operating a taxi attached to a popular ride-sharing company. Founder of E4 Live, Joy Brown, while condemning the incident, renewed calls for the, sexes, for the sexual offense, offenders registry to be made public. And as Kalisha Williams reports, one taxi association president is also raising concerns. News that the skeletal remains believed to be those of missing teacher Daniel Anglin send shockwaves across the island. And even more disturbing, a revelation that the suspect in custody is a known sexual predator who was deported from Antigua some time ago but was still operating as a taxi driver. Co-founder of Eve for Life, an organization which provides support to women and children who are victims of sexual offenses, Joy Crawford is concerned. It gives rise to the conversation as to how do we as a country treat knowing where, when, and how sex offenders are existing in Jamaica. And that brings into question the sex offender registry. Unlike countries like the United States and even our Caribbean neighbor Trinidad and Tobago, which have a public database where people can easily find sex offenders, in Jamaica the sex offenders registry is private and confidential. We talk about sex offenders should have certain kind of guidelines that they don't live close to schools or daycare centers or they don't take certain kind of jobs. Um, and including, of course, um, operating a taxi, which means that they often would be alone with passengers. Eh? Um, so what we have to ask ourselves is what's the purpose of the registry that we have here in Jamaica? In fact, there are only specific persons who can access the sex offenders registry in Jamaica. For instance, the police, personal counselors for the sex offenders, prospective employers of the sex offenders, people caring for or treating vulnerable people where the sex offender is, people managing schools where the sex offender is enrolled or looking to be enrolled, researchers approved by the minister and a parent, guardian, caregiver, or nearest relative or person having an association with the sex offender and for people who are not on this list well here's what it says that we're to do it says the information can be disclosed to a member of the jcf and the children's advocate or a public authority who can then protect the vulnerable person this is what's written in our in, in on our guidelines as a result we're asking that persons who need to especially those persons who are at risk and is living in fear, need to have access. So with the lack of a public sex offenders registry and some of the ride-sharing companies not requiring a background check for drivers, it was quite easy for the suspect in Daniel Anglin's case to operate a taxi, although he was a sex offender. Every taxi company should be formally registered in the same way we are formally registered with the transport authority. Every driver should be formally registered and certified by the transport authority. Founder of the New Kingston Owners and Operators Taxi Association, Conroy Nesbeth, stressed that in cases like these, the taxi industry on a whole faces the blame, and so the government will have to act now to root out criminal elements from the sector. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News.